All right, hello everybody. This week's Tech Tips Tuesdays is gonna be about soldering. First of all, I've got a little bit of a wider shock because I wanna point out one of the things I have always is a, a Heiko FA400 air purifier. Well, it's not a purifier, but it basically will pull air through this carbon filter and get the, the gunk out of the air. I've had um, past experiences where I was soldering for really long periods of time and I ended up really getting a lot of um, like flu-like symptoms and I kind of Googled it because it kept happening and I realized it was because of the flux. So the flux, when you're soldering a lot, the flux gives off a decent amount of chemicals that are not good for your lungs. I already tend to have a lot of uh, allergies, so that just kind of made it worse. So some people are going to have more robust lungs than others, but I highly recommend getting some kind of a fume extraction or fume hood or something to that effect if you're going to be doing a lot of soldering. Next thing, though, we're going to kind of come in here. I'm going to fire up my soldering iron. I have a Heiko. Uh, this is the FX888D. And I really dig it. I'll show you that. That's it kind of coming up right now. Uh, that's the main base unit. You can set the temperature. I keep it at the default of about 750. It's heating up now. And then I have the main um, base unit here. I have the one of the tips that came with it was is just a nice kind of pointed tip. Another thing that's great about it is it comes with this base that has this um, uh, kind of like a brass mesh type stuff that you can use to really kind of scrub the tip clean and get it free of any gunk. Uh, and then the, that's something you should also, you know, regular Google go over that. Another thing that I find is a pretty invaluable tool is having a solder sucker. Uh, there are a lot of good videos on YouTube about this stuff, but I just figure I, I have had a pretty busy week. I don't have a lot of time to prep, so I wanted to have something quick and easy, but that hopefully is also useful. So please, guys, let me know if, if this is useful for you. But uh, we're going to just kind of quickly show soldering and desoldering a few points here on this guy. So I'll zoom in kind of close here in a moment now, and we will resume from there. Uh, but before I get there, I would just highly recommend you look at getting at least some kind. There's, I've seen some Chinese very cheap 30 to 50 ish dollar ones that would probably work as well, but at least get these that have a base unit because they can put a lot more wattage into the iron and therefore get a lot more heat. And usually they'll have a temperature sensing tip as well that can kind of keep the tip. They'll start applying heat quickly when the temperature starts being pulled down. Whereas some of the other ones are just more consistently, they just put out an even amount of wattage and they don't adjust higher or lower depending on the actual usage. And so they waste energy and they also aren't very good to adapt when you put a very large object in to try and solder. So I highly recommend looking into a few of those. Weller makes some decent ones, Heiko makes great ones, but you could also get one of those less expensive ones, especially if you're just learning and you don't have a lot of money to invest. So if they're a good investment, I would try to avoid the ones that have a cable that go just straight into the wall that don't have that base brick that kind of has a, a power control unit that gives it much better wattage. All right, so let me zoom in now. So I'm just gonna, this is one of the boards that I made that I ended up accidentally uh, going uh, wrong on. So the whole point is just that I can solder on this and it won't really have any kind of an impact on what I'm doing. But uh, the general idea here would be, let's pretend I've got some wires here that I need to solder in. Some of the more important tips I will recommend. First, make sure that you're using some, uh, like a, a good pair of, tweet of pliers that have no serrations because serrations can cause nicks in the metal, which will eventually, with stress and time, end up breaking. So you wanna also bend them in some kind of a hook shape. If you can see that, that hook shape will help allow me to hook into the point, and then I can kind of pinch if I need to, or I kind of apply a little bit of more pressure to get it more tightly locked in, right? The next step is that you want to uh, pre-wet your, oops, my, uh, Soldering iron's wrapped around something here first. Let me get that fixed. Um, you you want to pre-wet the the tip. You possibly heard that before, but I'll show you what that really means. Is you I just have some spare wire. I'm going to try and do this with, but uh, you take the soldering iron. You take some of your solder itself, and you apply a little bit here. Um, see the fumes coming off already. That's the flux coming off, but I'm giving myself a little bit. So I'm gonna turn my fan on. Of course, it'll be a little obnoxious, but I don't wanna be breathing it in. So you pre-wet the, the tip, and if you see as I kind of rotate it around, there's a, a decent amount around it now. When I touch this to here, I don't put much on the actual tip. I actually wanna come in from the other side, and you see how that's already melting immediately? Because I'm making good contact. You then fill that hole, but as you see right now, um, that hole is pretty shiny. If I were to move this though, and keep moving it while it's oh, while it's kind of um, hardening and coming to temperature, 
I will get a very ugly joint. See how it looks kind of gray. That grayness is a sign of what's called a dry soldered connection. And there'll be tons of little micro fractures that will basically over time fail. The more heat and more vibrations that hit them, the quicker they'll fail. But it's actually a pretty easy fix as long as you can quickly heat, reheat the joint, reflow it. Well, this wire just doesn't want to stay in because I've moved it and bent it. Um, one of the things that I'm not doing right here is that you want to have a solid connection that is not going to bend or move on you. So you would, if you had to, you would kind of hold this still. Another thing, and that, that that's, that's set pretty well, but another reason why these kinds of helping hands are nice is if you don't have the ease of, of something like this, is you can first, well, let's first reuse my solder sucker. I now have solder in a tip in a hole that I need to clear out and try again on because I did something wrong. So you just have this plunger, you plunge the plunger down, you get this solder heated up and you quickly go over the top of it. And I still didn't get it all out, but you get some every time and you have to kind of, so now you can see I've got it mostly clear. I'll kind of do one more try after I really heat it up. Oops, I missed. Solder sucker is really nice to getting a lot of these kinds of things completely clean. Uh, I keep slipping past it. There we go, that's a lot better. So you can see that's also really good at cleaning out a, a, a hole and it kind of leaves behind the old solder cam comes out of it quickly. So I'm gonna show you, I was doing a lot of things kind of wrong there, most of them on accident because I'm hurrying, but um, the gist of that was I didn't get a good enough of a physical connection with my piece of wire. And then I also had a bad soldered connection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, this time I'm gonna cut my wire clean um, and I'm going to give myself some decent amount of back strips. So see how much more lead I have available now. I'm going to take that lead and I'm going to make a very tight physical connection by going in, bending a little away, and, and making sure that I really vise down on that tight so it can't move. And now it's locked in place. Next step is going to be basically just to go in now. Again, wet my the tip of my soldering iron really well. And you can see that's nice and shiny. I touch that to the general area, and then I can start flowing solder in. And you'll see I'm not even touching on that side. I'm touching close to it, but near it, not on the actual soldering iron. You get enough, just enough to, to quickly pull both away. You want to pull your solder lead away first so that it doesn't stick, and then you pull this away. And you can also see now that I've, because I've left it, it has remained shiny. You can then trim away excess leads that you need to, if needed, to, to deal with that as well. But that is one of the most important, I think, tips I learned after practicing was clean your tip often, pre-wet the tip so that you have some excess solder on it, and then go to the joint. And if you watch now, as soon as you just, I just saw it actually changing color because it got some flux across it. And now I can put the solder in from the top side down because I've got it so hot. And I fill my joint and I'm good. Um, I, I think desoldering can also be a complicated process. Uh, sometimes it's, so, so let's say I have that part already there. Uh, we already just showed this, but say I want to now come in later and do some maintenance on this. Maybe I realize that I hooked this up wrong. You want to try and get as much of that solder out as you can. Now see, I'm getting this clumped up stuff at the end. Pull that out. See how much came out there? Uh, and I do have this mostly clear, but I will just try one more time. So I now should be able to, and I am, able to move this around and pull my lead out. And I got it out. So those simple techniques are something that's very good to practice. When you first are learning, you will do a lot of the things that I did, which is overfill it with solder or underfill it with solder. You'll get those dry soldered connections. So it just takes a little bit of time and practice. And if you have the ability to get a hold of just an old electronics device, it's good to try and desolder stuff away from the board to see if you can get that clean. Uh, well, everybody, I hope that makes sense. Hopefully that uh, is a little bit of a good example for you guys of what kind of soldering tips that you can have to make sure that your soldering skill gets better. Try and find ways of practicing if you can. Find old boards to strip them. Find old boards to try and resolder things back on again that you know it's not a big deal if you damage things. Uh, all right, everybody, thanks. Let me know if you have any other questions. Let me know if there's other tips you'd like me to talk about. Enjoy, have a good night. Cheers.